put on the thingy to hold on. Okay. Hello. Hello. It's in the tab up top. Uh, the last one, yeah. Yes, and full screen, and it should work. It doesn't work. so many uh, hackathons already. And I think last month we just celebrated the 10th birthday of uh, GovZero in Taiwan. And that was a milestone. And I hope this will be the first year of uh, GovZero London anyway. So today I'm going to share um, a little bit of story about uh, democracy in Taiwan um, and the calling people public-private partnership. Just to emphasize the spirit of uh, the fact that we are working more towards to a uh, collaborative democracy instead of a representative one. So we really want to thank government and citizens having this collaborative um, um, partnership uh, mechanism interaction instead of one representing the other, the other. So the fact that we're creating space in the civil society and creating space in the government to allow co-creation for both sides is really important. And not only both sides, but also the private sector as well. So this partnership we're creating in Taiwan is the core, uh, kind of core uh, spirit I really want to introduce today with a lot of case studies. All right. Um, so when we talk about democracy in Taiwan, one thing to notice is that uh, Taiwan is a very young democracy. I would say the, uh, it's probably 35 years old, the same as me. Uh, the martial law was only lifted in 1987. And since then, we had uh, freedom of speech, freedom of uh, press, freedom of gathering. And before that, our, our previous generation grew up with uh, more authoritarian uh, governments. And now in our generation, we're more living with a uh, democratic environment. So this is very special. And uh, another thing we also know with the past three to four decades is that technology also advanced very rapidly. So you have, you have like, you're seeing all kinds of different new technologies arriving emerging in the world and arriving to Taiwan, and we will be the ones to incorporate them into our policymaking process or into our government, uh, open government uh, platform. So this is a few sample of uh, the, the digital minutes over time using different kind of cool technologies in different uh, occasions. So one, um, one thing I could probably mention is that whenever there's a conference inv invitation to us, to our office, we'll probably ask them if we can present with hologram. So this is the kind of making in the, in the background. We'll make our 3D model, we'll try to uh, prepare our immersive presentation and try to use a peppercorn, uh, not peppercorn, uh, paper ghost uh, effect uh, to, to present in, in real life. Uh, that saves our time and also we can transcend space so we don't need to travel all the way across the, 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 the earth uh, just for one presentation and it's fun to see. Um, so when using technology in our daily work, it's really important to, to, um, to know what challenges you're trying to solve. It's not only really about making things more fancy or making things more attractive. Uh, it could be that reason or it could be that uh, value or cost, but it's really important to think about why we want to apply technology for and where. So for example, when we request for uh, RESTful API for when we are integrating different government uh, uh, agencies' websites, 
we really want to make sure it's open API, not only because of it's, it's a more modern way of making information systems, but also because we want to open up and unlock the potential for other people to join forces to code for our database, uh, for our code base. Um, so, uh, for example, other governmental agencies in the future, or even citizens in the future, they can also help us code our public code. Uh, for another example, it's like using VR live streaming. We're actually questioning why we, when we are, you know, when we are organizing these consultation meetings, why can we not open up the uh, limitation of the size of the room, uh, the size, the the, the transcend the, the time of the event. Why can we not think about having this kind of discussion, this kind of conversation, not only here and now, but also lead online for a longer run? Um, the limitation of um, size of participants and the limitation of space and time, can that be uh, uh, um, removed as an original obstacle? And that's not something we want to try and see experiment. So enabling more immersive interaction with 360 videos or using left green uh, devices for uh, consultation meetings. That helps online and offline uh, participants to, to discuss and uh, in interact. So, um, yeah, and for example, when using AI to uh, empower the, to, to, to empower more people into online discussion, that is, that is more reflecting um, uh, a very, Big and important question for me that is, uh, can we can we actually facilitate a civic participation for a very massive, very mass population? Not only two people, five people, twenty people, but can we do uh, two hundred thousand people? Or in Taiwan, we have twenty-three million people. Can we do twenty-three million people deliberation? If that's possible, we will have a better chance to to uh, enable a more direct democracy. And how can that be done? And by using this piece of software called Polis, I, I, and I think most of you, or some of you know about this, we really see the, uh, the hope of starting to have rough consensus from this online discussion and start to develop uh, a more um, um, updated, a more uh, suitable set of regulations for the longer run. So these are some kind of examples of using technology in our day-to-day -day work uh, in terms of facilitating open governance uh, and uh, public civic participation. And just giving a bit of background, we've been doing this for not only uh, the past three to five years, but it has been a, uh, inherited from our civil society, which is GovZero. So I really, uh, I'm really enjoying being here because it's actually a GovZero related event. So, um, if some of you weren't here last time, I thought I think uh, last time Elle actually introduced Cup Zero. Yeah, right? community, the, the community side. Civil society side. Yeah. So if there's something over that, just let me know. Okay. okay. I can quickly skip it. Um, so if you haven't heard of Cup Zero, uh, I would describe it as a group of civic hackers who are in the, in the beginning it's a small group of uh, technical people who are actually caring a great deal about social uh, issues. So they would contribute their time and they would organize um, hackathons every two months, usually on a Saturday uh, whole day. In the morning, they will be uh, proposing ideas they want to work on. In the afternoon, people will be sitting around tables. The project owners, they will be sitting at the table and other people can join their projects. So it's basically, we call it a hackathon, uh, but it's actually in the morning, it, it's a, you can say it's an open space technology style where uh, people propose what they want to work on and then other people join forces and then just continue on doing this. Some projects will uh, evolve um, beyond the uh, uh, Saturday hackathons and become a weekly, we say, mini hackathons or weekly meetups. Um, but it really depends on the people and the, the projects over there. It's really uh, organic um, and the participants will Will start to evolve and come from different backgrounds. So just like very much like today, uh, in the beginning, you were um, we were seeing um, some. Mo most of them were uh, very technical people. Uh, they're good at programming and uh, good at using open data, for example. 
but then you start to see uh, designers coming, artists coming in, and then you start to see even journalists, and then you see uh, career public servants also joining force. And I'm quite actually surprised to see it's the second time of the Gazio London, and we're seeing people from the government already. That's a big yay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so one of the, one of the uh, well-mentioned uh, initiatives that we had in GovZero Taiwan uh, is actually the project or joint project called Fork in the Government, uh, which, is, um, which was starting from uh, some of the participants or contributors in GovZero Taiwan. They start to uh, look at the, the public websites that they didn't like. It usually ends with g0v.tw, and they try to make a better version of it. And then after that, so for example, they will make a better user experience using open data, cleaning the experience and so on. And they would publish to a different URL, a different domain name, swapping the O to zero. And that's how we uh, actually name it Gov Zero. So it's not really actually how we name it Gov Zero, but it's the spirit of Gov Zero. So imagine any citizen using public websites and they finally they didn't like it. They, they can just go to, for example, education.gov.tw and swap the O to zero and find a better experience, Gov Zero version of public services. And it's kind of the spirit of hacking and forking the government. Um, and uh, since it's quite a grassroots community, Gov Zero, we are making things um, for the government, but um, we're not seeing them as enemies. We want to uh, uh, open source the code so that one day they can merge it back. And that's the spirit. All right. Um, one thing to mention, um, while GovZero in Taiwan was evolving, uh, after two years of its start, it started in 2012, and then around uh, 2014, some flower movement took place. Um, it was the time when um, the, the, the parliament at that time wouldn't run a deliberation, deliberation about a surface trade deal between Taipei and Beijing. Um, and, and it was not okay. So uh, some students in Taiwan, they entered the parliament and occupied there for about 22 days. They tried to run real deliberation about this surface trade deal. And uh, the Zero community, their role was bringing in live streaming devices, bringing cables, uh, facilities, to really live stream and broadcast what was happening in the scene, in the, inside, the, inside the parliament. So it can be reported as really uh, non-violent and uh, peaceful. So it was not uh, something, uh, 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 it was not some kind of protest where you enter with a preset agenda. It was rather open space technology where it's more sourcing from the participants what they want to discuss about. And this, um, this event was a very important turning point because the, the next, of zero hackathon after this protest. Um, uh, that time, the cyberspace uh, minister, Jacqueline Tai, she uh, also participated in the Gov zero hackathon in the morning. She proposed this idea to have a uh, platform for a rational discussion. Because during the protest that time, you can almost sense everyone, no, not, no matter whether they are from the society or from the government, or whether they are uh, different kinds of background, uh, even they are protesting at the ground or online, we all sense this need to sit uh, closely to talk and work together on what we want Taiwan to do. So it's not only about protesting and fighting against each other, but it's more about the, the sense, the need of that we really have to work together and discuss together of how do we deal with this situation. So. Jacqueline Tsai proposed this idea, she wrote it and posted it, and she said we need to have a platform to have a rational discussion. Some contributors who participated in the hackathon last like Saturday um, took the, took the uh, challenge and built a platform called Be Taiwan in about two to three weeks. And one of the participants over there is the current digital minister, Audrey Tan. So this is a very interesting moment when, and then, what we know afterwards is Jacqueline, um, uh, Audrey, Audrey uh, stepping to the, to the government and in the cabinet office uh, or the minister with the portfolio uh, office and start to work on things about digital matters. Um, but what is in Taiwan essentially? 
this is a um, project, I would say, coming from Gov Zero for sure. Uh, it is also evolved into an experiment for uh, open consultation process. Um, so mainly focusing on um, reforming digital regulations <coughs> because most of the work is around digital matters, so around uh, using technology. So we want to uh, identify those uh, regulations we want to reform, and that is digital related. So, um, very similar to GovZero's spirit, Taiwan is also a very organic community, where it's organized by the people who participate in those mini hackathons, and it's run by volunteers. So no one was paid, everyone is volunteer, they run this, um, <coughs> Uh, open consultation process and they uh, grow the process together. So what you're uh, reading from now on is all co-created from the by the community, uh, even by different people who participate in the in the in the mini hackathon. So imagine today is the second Gov Zero event uh, in London, and maybe in three weeks there's another event. December. <coughs> and in another two days, there's another event. And maybe there will be different people participating. And maybe you all share one project together. And that's kind of the way how this project works uh, in Gov Zero and also in Taiwan. So it's a self-driving uh, volunteer uh, community. Um, after a few case studies, we started to have this procedure uh, taken to shape. So starting from proposal stage, which is when <coughs> whoever participates in those mini hackathons, they can propose an idea. There's one um, digital related regulation they want, they want to discuss or they want to reform. Um, the second stage will be opinion stage. The same uh, mini hackathon people participate in that. It will be the organizer for collecting opinions for that specific um, uh, topic. And then the third stage will be reflection um, will be uh, collecting recommendations and then which will be uh, collect into a draft bill and sent to the parliament. All right. And the background, the background of Taiwan, it's not a say centralized technological platform. It's rather a pool of open source um, tools that we use to push progress for each basis. So in the for example, in the first um, um, idea proposal phase, we'll simply take headpad, headpad or a, a type form, different kinds of tools that can collect ideas. Um, for survey tools to collect opinions, we can use discourse, or sometimes we do use polis. And when reflecting on recommendations, we can uh, uh, we will invite people, stakeholders, into the same consultation meeting, but also we'll live stream those meetings, so we will use something uh, like like housing or uh, using YouTube. And then when we uh, send a draft bill to the parliament, we can use um, trans transcription tools and document tool, show document tools. So things like um, uh, say it over there will be used. <coughs> so this is just uh, my old photo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, me participating in one of the V Taiwan uh, mini hackathon, just to give you an idea. It's really similar to what we're looking at right now today. Um, so we'll have pizza and we'll provide drinks and people will be talking about different topics. Um, everyone can sign up to volunteer on different tasks. So we do encourage people to say archive uh, or document the event by just taking notes on the site. So usually newcomers, they will, they will pick up this task and start just typing in minutes. Um, and uh, yeah, like, if you participate more, you will start to see that some people will be uh, curating questionnaires, some people will be curating like presentation decks for a certain topic, and some people will be inviting uh, stakeholders to to uh, to the to the discussion. So it's quite it's quite organic, and everything happens on a Wednesday evening. Um, yeah, um, a few things to mention when we grow the VI in Taiwan community. One tool we use quite a lot is Polis. Um, so from on the top of the interface, you can see other people's comments or statements where you can vote for agree, disagree, or pass, meaning um, maybe I'm not sure about this comment. And then in the center section, you can type in, in your own statement, which 
will be uh, voted by other participants on this online survey or online conversation. Um, and then after, uh, and while, while the survey is going on, um, this conversation of this particular topic will be visualized, uh, like the, 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 cl the cloud of uh, statements will be projected onto a uh, 2D planner and uh, it will be visualized on the, on the, in the, in the, in the bottom section. So the blue circle, the blue circle, I can see the bottom. Blue circle is actually to yourself, and then while you uh, vote, uh, vote along other people's comments, you start to see your own icon have moved, moved around, and that represents how, um, not really how far you are with other people, but actually you're, you'll be closer to uh, the people who, has, who have a more similar voting pattern as you. And the gray blobs, uh, it, it doesn't really, I cannot say it doesn't really mean anything, Two minutes. Okay. The, uh, so it actually represents some kind of division among groups, but it is really important to 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 see this visualization because you start to know actually why, why you are voting alone. Uh, you're actually kind of jumping between the gray blocks and realizing that actually we are all not that different. So usually, while the conversation go. Uh, go along, uh, after about one month we will do the we'll work on the survey, you start to see the statements um, traveling from a more divisive statement to a more consensus statement. And it is because from the design of the interface you cannot see a reply button. We know trolls live on reply button because with the reply button you can actually uh, attack comments, you can attack statements, you can attack the people. But uh, without a reply button, people we observe that people uh, taking the survey, they will be um, eager to rewrite other people's statements in order to get, get more uh, agreed votes. And that is a beautiful way of, for me, finding the first uh, step of rough uh, consensus. That's the step, first step of uh, collecting, uh, using collective intelligence to find what is roughly the direction we want to go forward. Okay, so just quickly skip through a few slides. Um, these are um, one of the steps, uh, we call it open consultation meeting, uh, where we will uh, bring in live streaming devices to the meeting as well. And what I want to mention over here is that the VTaiwan uh, project, starting from the uh, GovZero community, inspired the making of um, something called PO Network, Participation Officers Network that we built in the Taiwanese government and cabinet office. When we start to uh, create the, the, the office, which is called Public Digital Innovation Space, because we want it to be a space, not an office, and work on public digital uh, innovative stuff, uh, which is quite long uh, anyway. But um, the, the PO Network was established to work on something really similar to Taiwan to facilitate meaningful conversations with the society. So instead of just opening a, um, so before we were opening a space in the Taiwan community for uh, governments, for public and private to participate and co-create, and now we're entering the government space using P PDs and the PO network, allowing more conversation to happen. Um, yeah, so this will be uh, one of the um, analogy of v Taiwan's mini hackathons. Uh, instead of having every week mini hackathons, PO Network have, has uh, every month monthly meetings where they will decide on which topic to host workshop for. Usually they will source um, petition websites, opinions, and have different uh, P participa participation officers to vote on what topics to go through. The POs, they are coming from different ministries in Taiwan. We have 32 different ministries, and every ministry will assign or have volunteers of one to five participation officers. And together, they, they uh, meet up every month. And it, with, within that monthly meeting, they will vote for the topics to um, organize open consultation meetings for, for the next month. So our capacity is about um, four projects per month. Uh, which is very exhausting, 
uh, and then it has been uh, over a hundred uh, workshops uh, up until today. All right. So uh, just to sum him up, I think this is just um, a visualization I happily made a few years ago to visualize what is the, the what I what I imagine a recursive public is like. Like it's always updating, it's always knowing what our group of people want to uh, want to uh, move our society towards. Uh, it's visualizing what's the most updated rough consensus and uh, uh, having a sort of mechanism that we can also always update that, and um, uh, and then we can interact with that directly uh, and input to that collective intelligence. Uh, it, that's how I interpret interpret intelligence sometimes. Uh, yeah. So lastly, I'm not sure if El uh, mentioned this before, but in Godzilla, there's a motto to be nobody, which means not only asking why nobody is doing this, but uh, think that you are the nobody that you can already start making things. So welcome to the Godzilla London universe, <laughs> universe second <laughs> chapter. And this is my presentation. Thank you. Thank you.